Okay, after making this incredibly easy and super moist spice cake, your house is literally going to smell the best it ever has. So to start off, you wanna preheat your oven to 160 degrees Celsius with the fan on and grease or line two eight inch cake tins. I'm using some homemade cake release today, which I absolutely love. It saves so much time. Okay, set your prepared cake tins aside and in a bowl, you wanna sift together your dry ingredients. So I've got two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour, a quarter cup of corn flour, also known as cornstarch, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt, two and a half teaspoons of ground cinnamon, one and three quarters of a teaspoon of ground ginger, half a teaspoon of ground cloves, and half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. And then using a whisk, just whisk that all together until well combined. You can also use cake flour in replacement of the all-purpose flour and cornstarch. Oh my god, this already smells amazing. Now set your dry ingredients aside and in another bowl we're going to combine together our wet ingredients. So I've got one and a half cups of firmly packed soft brown sugar, three room temperature eggs, one cup of unflavored vegetable oil, one cup of unsweetened applesauce, two teaspoons of vanilla, and half a cup of room temperature Greek yogurt. And then again using a whisk, just whisk that all together until well combined. So you should end up with a very liquidy mixture like this. And now all that's left to do is pour our wet ingredients into our dry ingredients and then gently fold it through with a spatula until just combined. It's really important not to overmix this batter, otherwise you will end up with a very dense cake. And that is literally it. It is so, so easy to put together. And now all that's left to do is evenly distribute this batter into our two pre-prepared cake tins. Now I'm just giving my cake tins a little bang to get rid of any large air bubbles. And now these are going to go into the oven for 28 to 30 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean. So my cake layers are done now. They've been cooling in the pans for about 15 minutes. And now I'm just running a thin knife around the edges of the pan to release my cakes and then turning them out onto a wire rack to completely cool. I honestly just cannot express how incredible these smell right now. And just look at how soft these cake layers are. Now while these are cooling, let's go ahead and make the most incredible cream cheese frosting. It is so easy to make, so all you have to do is add one cup or 225 grams of room temperature unsalted butter to a bowl and using a hand mixer or your stand mixer, whip it until it's light and creamy. So this should take about three to four minutes. If you're using your stand mixer, then you want to use the paddle attachment on a medium-high speed. Okay, now once your butter is much lighter in color like that, then the next thing that you want to do is add in four and a half cups of icing sugar in three batches. So add in about a third first and on a low speed mix until it's combined, then add in your next third, mix until it's combined, and then add in the rest and mix until combined. And you wanna scrape down your bowl every now and then as you're doing this, just to make sure everything's mixing well. Okay, now to finish off, you wanna add in about one and a half cups, so that's 335 grams of cold cream cheese. Now you wanna make sure that your cream cheese is the firm type, not the spreadable type, and make sure it's cold, because this is going to help make sure that our cream cheese frosting isn't too soft. And then you also wanna add in one and a half teaspoons of vanilla and one and a half tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. And then just mix that together on a medium high speed for a few minutes until everything is well combined and your frosting is super smooth and creamy. And that is it. You should end up with a beautifully smooth, not too soft cream cheese buttercream. So my cake layers are cool now, so let's assemble this cake. So because I have a little doming on my cakes, I'm just starting off by trimming off the tops with a serrated knife so that I have nice flat cake layers. Now to stack my cake, I'm starting off by placing my first cake layer directly onto my cake stand, and then I'm placing a generous amount of frosting on top and using my offset spatula to spread it out. Now for this cake, I'm going for a rustic look, so I'm not going to be covering the sides, so I'm trying to be as neat as possible because you'll be able to see the frosting on the edges. Then I'm placing my next cake layer on top and again neatly spreading out a generous amount of frosting. And then to finish off decorating, I'm just placing some walnuts and pecans around the top edges of the cake. 
And that is it, my beautiful spice cake is all done. This cake is packed with flavor and it's so incredibly soft and moist and it just gives you the warmest, coziest vibes. Mmm, oh my god, it's so, so soft and it's so flavorful, it's just got all those beautiful spices coming through. If you try out this recipe, don't forget to leave a review on my blog. I love hearing from you guys and I'll see you in the next video.